the B. Lynch procedure is named after Christopher B. Lynch, and it's a procedure performed to control postpartum hemorrhage, usually after a C-section, uh, but it also could be performed after a uh, spontaneous vaginal delivery. Uh, the indication for a B. Lynch procedure is a uterine atony that cannot be controlled with uterotonics um, or when uterotonics cannot be utilized. The advantages of a B. Lynch um, over other procedures uh, such as a ovarian or internal iliac artery ligature or uterine artery ligature, which are procedures that are used to control pulse pressure to the uterus, um, are that this is a simple procedure um, and most of the time will avoid hysterectomy. This B. Lynch is also simpler than a hysterectomy. A B. Lynch procedure re preserves the uterus and is life-saving, but it's also safe. There are no complications that are known when this procedure is done correctly, and it's able to preserve the patient's fertility. In order to perform a B. Lynch, um, you need a suture. The recommended suture needs to be very large and very strong, uh, with a large tapering needle. We use a number two chromic cat gut. It's usually a 30 inch uh, loop suture. This suture is very strong, very long, um, and it also is rapidly um, reabsorbed. So it's the ideal suture. You do not want to use a permanent suture for this procedure. If you have a patient with uterine atony who's had a vaginal delivery, you would obviously want to proceed to the operating room and administer general anesthesia and perform a fan and steel incision. Some say that you must perform a hysterotomy on the uterus, a low uterine segment hysterotomy, in order to perform AB Lynch, um, but this is not always the case. This procedure requires a, uh, a surgeon and an experienced assistant, and the main role of the assistant is to help hold the suture taut throughout the procedure so that um, atony can be controlled. So to begin this procedure, you can start on either side of the uterus. Um, I'm going to start on the right. You want to take your suture, and first of all, what you want to do is cut the suture at one end near the needle so that you actually have 60 inches of working suture. You don't need the double loop. You just need 60 inches of long suture. The first thing you're going to do is puncture the uterus about three centimeters below your hysterotomy site and about three centimeters medial to the right lateral border. Again, this could be the left lateral border. It really doesn't matter. So you puncture the uterus, go thread the, uh, thread this through the suture through the intrauterine cavity, and you're going to come out about three centimeters above the hysterotomy site and about four centimeters medial to the lateral border of the uterus on that side. You're going to carry the suture up to the fundus of the uterus and then over posteriorly. Alternatives uh, to this part of the procedure are to throw a suture, to throw the suture into the tissue of the uterus at the top, thus securing the suture so that slippage does not occur. You want your suture to go over the fundus of the uterus about three to four centimeters from the right corneal border. Posteriorly, the uterus should be punctured at about the same hot level as the anterior superior incision was made. And again, about three to four centimeters from the right lateral border. And then you're going to thread this suture through the uterus horizontally, and you're going to come out about three centimeters above the left hysterotomy edge and about four centimeters medial to the left lateral border. You're then going to pull the suture up 
and throw it over the fundus of the uterus anteriorly. Again, you can take a bite at the top of the fundus to secure the suture if you like. And then you're going to pull the suture down anteriorly. The next step is going to be to go again th about three centimeters above the hysterotomy site, puncture the uterus, thread the suture through the uterus, and come out below the hysterotomy site. Again about three centimeters below the incision and about three centimeters medial to that left lateral border. The suture should then be pulled through and the needle cut off. During the whole procedure, the first assistant is, is helping to keep the suture taut so that there is no slack at all in the suture, and they're also helping to compress the uterus down so that the suture can be kept as tight as possible. At this point, the surgeon will remove the hemostat from this end of the suture and will tie the suture uh, tightly while his or her assistant compresses the uterus and keeps the slack completely out of the uterus. Ideally, uh, you should be able to visualize the amount of bleeding coming from the vagina to ensure that you have controlled the uterine adeny for which you did the procedure. Next, if you have a hysterotomy that's open, you're going to want to close that.